Let's also keep track of what's happening in the analyst community around some of the big tech names and obviously the uh, Apple situation kind of being in the focus right now, Renita. I know there's been some competing kind of commentary from analysts What's the latest? Well, today we are looking at a downgrade from KeyBank, and this analyst is most concerned about Apple's valuation levels and about sales that are expected to slow of the iPhone. And this is really a conversation that got lost in the sauce when we talked about just the boom that this stock got for, or the excitement, I should say, that consumers got for the new iPhone 15. People forgot that there are still a lot of consumers that are pulling back on spending. Yeah. And that's what this analyst is talking about. So he lowered this stock's this stock's rating to a sector weight from an overweight rating, did not assign a price target to the stock, saying that Apple's trading near its all-time high valuation levels and a large premium to the NASDAQ in terms of historical earnings and cash flow multiples. But Apple's sales are likely to struggle, and that's because of the challenging upgrade cycle for the iPhone and then consumer spending slowing. Now, initial U.S. iPhone promotions from U.S. carriers, this analyst said, are being restrictive and additionally KeyBank feels like the international estimates the growth expectations for reacceleration that these might have been overshot a little bit they may be a little bit too aggressive but mm. this analyst says that consensus estimates also are full and while Apple appears that its user growth is actually still more important than the unit growth he wanted to make that sure many mm. people talk about the number of units sold we hear that obviously in other companies as well, but the user growth, he says, is the more important figure there, a more important sentiment there as well. That's kind of the bullish caveat, mm -hmm. which is that, all right, even if iPhone sales don't blow the roof off, keeping people in the ecosystem is what's important. Yeah, but he says that that might be a losing argument given the fact that this stock mm, wow. doesn't have a catalyst right now near term. You know, it yeah. doesn't have a big Apple event that's coming up next and, you know, until next earnings comes around. Yeah, was the iPhone and mm -hmm. uh, now they're overheating. Right, now they're overheating, right? They're too hot to handle. And you know what, that's a story that we really need to update on because if that grew to a bigger problem, then that could be a bigger problem from Apple also. So that isn't necessarily why they're doing this. This is more of a macro case for the downgrade. It's still a downgrade on Apple, which doesn't happen very often, mm -hmm. which is why we wanna spend some time with it. But I would say that if this is the right argument, I mean, it's a very logical one. It's a very macro-driven one. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how expensive Apple got on its own valuation basis. Right. So this is nothing like groundbreaking. I wonder if this analyst kind of watching the price action saying, okay, looks like Apple is susceptible like anybody else here. But there's nothing really revelatory in this. I mean, the valuation argument, the pricing down mm -hmm. argument by consumers, maybe they can't afford thousands of dollars on phones right now, mm -hmm. all kind of fits with stuff that should have been in our framework. It should have, and that's exactly what I was talking about before. You you know, this got lost in the excitement Agreed, of the yeah. new tools, the new toys that people had. Yeah, well so said. it was only a matter of time before this argument came to the top of the conversation. We'll see how it affects uh, the trading in it today. A little bit of uh, weakness, but not too bad. So market trying to rally even with the downgrade yeah. on probably the most important company. Thanks, Renita, for running us through.